Okay, so in this video, I'm going to do a quick example on um, work done based with springs. So we're going to calculate the work done work done it takes to compress or stretch a spring. Um, and for that, we need to introduce uh, something called Hooke's law. So basically, the um, force it takes to press a spring, of course, is going to be variable. If you think about a spring, when you first start stretching it, it stretches pretty easily. But as it gets more and more extended, the force it takes to stretch it out gets harder and harder. Or gets, it requires a bigger and bigger force. Or same with your compressing. When you first compress it, it goes pretty easy. But as you start pushing harder, as it gets smaller, you have to push harder and harder. So basically, the force it takes to compress or stretch a spring is proportional to how much you've stretched it. So here's the formula F equals some constant K um, times the x, which x is the displacement from normal length. So let's say that this is normal. So my my spring, when it's just sitting there, it's normally 10 centimeters long. So um, in this problem, it took a force of 10 newtons to stretch to 20 centimeters. So since I stretched it from 10 to 20, the x in this example would be 10 because the x is the displacement, not the length of the spring, but the, the difference between the the new length and the normal length. Okay, so in this in this example, um, the x would be ten. Okay, now uh, in these spring problems, we have to have some kind of a, a way to find out what the constant is. Either they have to give us the k constant, or we have to be able to find it. And that's what this is doing. This says that it takes a force of ten newtons to stretch. Um, uh, the spring out to 20 centimeters. So knowing that the normal length is 10, that means this force of 10 newtons is equal to the k times the displacement. Now, the trouble that one one of the problems here is that newtons doesn't play well with centimeters because newtons is meters per, um, or it's kilograms times meters per second. So this has to be anytime we're playing with newtons we have to put our lengths in terms of meters so i'm about to make a mistake in this video so i'm inserting this preemptive strike um i was about to put 0.2 in here <clears throat> even though i just emphasized that this is the this is the uh, displacement or the change from normal to thing from normal to the new um so this would actually be 0.1 because it changed from <clears throat> 10 to 20 centimeters. So the actual change was 10 centimeters, and 10 centimeters converted to meters would be 0.1 um, meters. So that should be 0.1. Now the, the video continues on as if it was 0.2. So um, if we you know divide by 0.1, that would be 100 um, is equal to K. So this is the right K. Um, the rest of the math should be correct. Just need to put in 100 for K instead of 200. So 20 point. So if we divide 10 by 0.2, um, we get 200. So my constant in this case, my string constant is 200. So that means the force that requires to stretch this spring is always going to be equal to, in this case, two, 200 times the, the displacement, how far I want to displace it. So you can see these problems are a little bit confusing because there's really two distances. There's the distance that's involved in my displacement, I mean, in, in calculating the force, but there's also a distance that's involved with um, the normal work formula, right? Because the work formula is force times distance, right? So the way the spring works is going to work. The work is going to be force, which is 200 times displacement times the distance. So there's a, 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 a point of confusion possibly there um, of you know what distance is what. Okay. So we're going to answer a question. Let's say we're going to say how much how much work to stretch the above spring to um, 
there are 15 centimeters. Okay. So now why do we need integrals here? Because as we said, every every little bit of compression, the force is going to change, right? Because so the force is changing based on how much we've compressed it, right? So um, and the the distance that we're going to compress it, of course, is also has to be calculated. So if we think about it, the um, way we're going to look at this is, is I well, we're stretching this, not compressing. But if I stretch it, so if I stretch it all the way out to here, I'm going to stretch um, that first stretch. The first bit of stretching is going to have the same force. Then the next bit of stretching is going to have the same force. And then the next bit of stretching has the same force. So the, the little change at this time is going to be my distance. So my integral is going to be 200x times some little change in distance. Okay? Because every so so the the distance something's being moved is not changing. It's the the dis the force that the or the distance that the force is being applied to that's what's changing. So I, I break the the distance into little increments instead of something involving the force into little increments. So that's what's different about this from the other types of problems. And of course, since we're going to 15 centimeters, um, now remember it's normally 10, so we're actually going from 10 to 15, right? Because the normal length of the spring is 10. So we're going to stretch it from 10 to 15. Um, and that would be, so if we just evaluate that integral, it'll calculate the work done. So we're going to, uh, let's see, that would be what? 100x squared divided away from 10 to 15. Um, and then we'd have 100 times 225 minus 100 times 100. And, whoops, that's going to be 22500. Whoops. Minus. So we're going to have 125 or 12,500, and that would be newtons because I'm um, remember to find the the k we divided by. Oh, whoops, 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 whoops! Back up, back up. Remember we said it, we had to be in meters. So um, this is a good chance for me to show that was. So really, we want to go from 0.1 to 0.15, um, and so this should be. 0.1 to 0.15, so then this would be 2.25. I thought that was kind of a big number, <laughs> and this would be um, 0 0.01. Okay, so then that would be 225 minus um, one. So it'd be 224 newtons. Okay, so there's a spring example. So now you've seen, you know, this is really the three type of work problems we're going to do. We're going to do ones involving where we're pulling a chain or a or a banner or a rope or something like that. Um, and then the one where we're moving some kind of a liquid. Um, and then these spring problems. So those are the three types of work done problems that we're going to be doing. And each one has a slightly different kind of um, way of calculating. And remember, the key is to keep in mind you're just figuring out integration is just adding up a bunch of little things. So you have to look at the situation and figure out what are the little things that I'm adding up. It's also helpful to really ask yourself, why do I have to use integration here? Because um, that means something's changing as I go. So figuring out what is it changing, what's changing, that's how you determine the dx or the dy or whatever that little, um, little change is. All right. <clears throat>